For all the latest reviews, interviews and everything entertainment in Tamil, Kannada, Malayalam and Telugu, subscribe to Film Companion South now. Hello Shekhar Kapoor and uh, A.R. Rahman, welcome to Film Companion South. You two have been trying to work together for the longest time. Uh, if memory serves me right, since I think Tara Rampam, Pam, is that, is that when you both, I think you even recorded some songs together, I think. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> We've recorded many songs together, but you know what? It's not, we've been trying to work together for a lot, so long. We've been working together for so long. And now okay. finally, this has come out. Everything, all the stuff you do evolves into something beautiful later. Yeah, yeah. No, but I'm saying that, that you know, that this is the first time that, that after all those years that something has actually come out with the both of you together, as opposed to the other movies that, that you know, or the time that you knew each other. Even Dilse was a co-production where you work together. But, uh, you know, this is the first time that something by Shekhar Kapoor has been scored by Air Rahman and is coming to the public. Am I right? I think that's the wrong word, something by Shekhar. Actually, if you ask me, where is the director's end and the composer starts? That has been our relationship. And I think that's why sometimes it's tough. There is this kind of when you develop a relationship, uh, that's why this is presented by ARM and Sheikh Kapoor together. It's not, it's all somewhere the provocations and the thoughts and the the ideas are the same. I'm going to let him talk. Yeah. No, no, please. Yeah. I like your voice. <laughs> Sorry. Let's talk about this musical that's being premiered at uh, the Expo 2020 at Dubai, where you are right now. Uh, I'm just first intrigued by the title itself. Why? We met in 2019. He said, I was in Baku. Um, because I think my movie, 99 song, The Color Correction or something, CG got delayed. I said, I'm not going to wait for 10 days. Let's go. And my friend Swami Yusuf was there. I said, let's go meet Swami. So I pulled my kids and went to Baku. And then suddenly Shekhar called, AR, can you come to Dubai? I'm <laughs> coming back. And so I went there. And the, the dome was being built and then we went to the site and I looked at it and said the enormity of that one and said, oh my God, if we can do something on this, a musical, it'll be so cool. And by then, you know, the, the roof went up. We met in four other places, Boston, London, Chennai, Mumbai. And I took a whiteboard and all his ideas keeps flowing every time. I said, okay, let's pin it down. A, B, C, D, you know, like a whole chart of... And uh, then Artists in Motion, they came in, and uh, I think it's an interesting thing. We threw things at them, and I got uh, Suhaila Kapoor, who's Shaker's sister, who I've tried to work with for 20 years almost. And she came up with a lot of ideas. I said, we're going to do the first song. This Give me one word for curiosity. And she said, why? I said, great, this is the title of the thing. Strangely, this is the first song. The, the why, why was the first song. And uh, then Dana Dajani came in, another writer from Jordan, Palestine. So I was very fascinated by a completely different group of people and doing something which I've never done before. You know, when you go work on musicals abroad, they tell you what to do and how it is, and there are so much, you know, parameters for that. Here, um, I, we just embraced what Dubai is, you know, Expo is. Uh, it's about, you know, taking humanity to the future, aspiring, all that sort of sustainability and, and art and, you know, the whole, uh, looking, aspiring to a greater future well, for the whole human race. And, yeah, then why came? <laughs> why and the song started falling in place and then he developed a new character, which once you see, apart from wisdom and curiosity, and then he came up with this idea brilliant idea and then now we are in the final rehearsals in the next couple of days. There's nothing that the human imagination ends without ending with one word why. We could go you know we could go to the ends of the universe and probably have the question well why? Not why did you go there but what lies ahead because while we are addicted to ends you know we know inside us that nothing ends, nothing began, nothing ended. And so there's always a question why. So you become a child, ask a child, everything is why. And actually, as you, as you become older and you, you ask an adult, you push them and say, but why, why? Why encompasses the whole of imagination? 
all of our imagination can be encompassed in one word, which says why. And therefore, you start discovering. You're trying to discover. You go to art, you go to science, you go to all kinds of things only because you want to know why. Raman, what you just said, it was not like somebody commissioned you. You, you when you guys took a look at the at the at the venue, uh, something just said, "Let's create something appropriate for it." Is that is that how that did yeah. I get that right? I think usually you know everything is given on a brief, and here I think we are, we are he's throwing ideas at me, and I said, "How about this? And how about this? And how about this?" And that's it. I think by then we have like nine tracks now. <laughs> we, we thought we'd have five tracks. It's gone to nine. And suddenly he came in and said, we were planning on an opening of the stuff to be very orchestral and listen to it. And, and there's a temp music, which the company put in. said, I don't like this. I want to rap. <laughs> Everyone went like, what? And immediately the next day I gave what the bang rap, the story of the world in a rap format. So, and then it doesn't follow that pattern. It breaks, go to musical theater. Then it goes to the world music. On the whole, I think it embraces what uh, the Expo actually stands for. You know, culmination of so many things, taking ideas forward, and uh, yeah. I think, we, I think so, we commissioned ourselves. Yeah. That's what we did. We commissioned ourselves, and it's been a strange experience because we were trusted, <laughs> and nobody's asked us. At Expo, they just said, yeah, you want to do that? <laughs> do it. Nobody asked us what the story was. Nobody asked us what the format is. Um, and we just promised them that this will, they will be proud of this. And they will know it for many years to come that we encompassed, as Rahman says, the very ideas of how humanity moves forward with the question why. It's, it's very simple. Actually, we just, and, and Rahman and I have always said, he's always said to me, the only way you and I will work together, he produced it and director I <laughs> We had no producer, Dandaleka, yeah, we just did it because we didn't, because it just emerged. We found that absolute trust actually is the biggest danda. It's yeah. the biggest provoker because now you take responsibility. And there's no limitation to that, that we have to stop here. It goes on and on and on. And um, yeah, that was empowering. And it's, I think that the stage of my life, it's, a whole new experience, especially after all the COVID lockdowns coming here. If whatever you want, you, you get orchestra and chorus and this and that. And, and so if something goes wrong, we are to be blamed. <laughs> yeah. It won't, but hopefully. So when you say it's a musical, uh, is it a like a like a wall to wall musical or is it music? And dialogues and music and dialogues and what kind of format is what? Music and dialogues, all the stuff. See, the one thing I want to, there are many things which are so unique to the Middle East or India or the East, which never, which gets stereotyped in the West when Western people do. And it, this is an opportunity for us to bring in those and put it away in a world stage and say it is also part of culture. It's very important that. And that's the biggest thing I felt like for the first time you can put something which is very Eastern, um, spiritual or, or a beat which is... So nobody's going to say, I don't like that. What is that? My Western years are aching for that. <laughs> and we had a certain things. I said, no, it has to be there. Uh, we need a multicultural kind of a song and it has to be there. That's how it is. That's how we envisioned the whole thing. And it took time for even the, some of our friends in, in the show to get used to things. And then they say, oh, this is the best song. And so they keep, and that's it, it evolved, it evolved, sometimes they were like shocked by what ideas and then they would say this is the best idea, but they'll own it, so. <laughs> no, it is, a, it, there, it's a story, there is a story, and the music provokes a story, there's no greater form of storytelling than poetry or music. Raman, when, when you do things like this, uh, which which are bigger in scope than film music uh, and and something larger, even an idea wise than than what a film can contain. It obviously takes a lot of time. So when you are also simultaneously doing your film music, is this always running at the back of your mind? How do you balance doing that at one stage yeah. and doing this? What I did was uh, this time I said, um, I'm going to 
dedicate more time for this because this is something which is so special and I will keep a couple of days for the other work and so when I scored Atarangire, Anand Rai and you know Himanshu were here I took them out for dinner and then we had we jammed and we finished the whole score probably in 3-4 days every cue was done and the other acoustic recording everything was done in Chennai and we had something called Source Connect and we can listen to the mix in real quality so the, the working style doesn't have to be like a person physically sitting there and in a way it gives you more objective work, you know, idea about uh, the judgment about the mix or the arrangement. And it's like water, you know, it takes the shape of the container. If you want to do something, you can do it. And you have, I have an amazing team who, if I call at 2 o'clock, they'll just leave everything and come, 2 a.m. And right. that is the blessing I have. All, all my life I've blessed with good people. My good friends. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, um, I think what he's trying to say in, in essence is also that creativity cannot be structured. It's not yeah. like, okay, now I have to give this part. Creativity just emerges like that. If it emerges, and if you have, like he does, the genius to be able to capture it, then he doesn't need that much time. I watched him. He says, I'm an atom. You know, he, he'll go away. And he'll come up and say, Acha, what about this? And he'll play the most incredible theme. And you'll sit and cry and say, when did that come to you? He said, Main aata hon. <laughs> he goes away, comes back. There's aata. a piano in another room. <laughs> so he doesn't watch me, he'll compose it. He's got so much to give and, and such a, a creator in the mind. I don't think anybody is in the wavelength of what Shekhar Kapoor is really. I've been watching him. And why is he doing that stuff? Why is he doing that stuff? But he knows exactly what he's doing. Right. And then boom, he comes with, like for instance, one song we were doing, and the song was a culmination, the very end of the end song. I was always wondering, it's got too many ideas and it doesn't have an anchor. And I didn't know how, what was missing. And yesterday he came in, day for yesterday he came in and said, can you make that first chorus in the end with all the gospel kind of thing? And I was like, wow. And just like, like that. And uh, those are the things I'm amazed when he comes with uh, stuff. And yeah, even working on, you know, I've seen him working with Harvey Weinstein. I've seen him working with, uh, um, on Elizabeth. And so it's fascinating. He's a special guy. <laughs> Shekhar, there are only two films of yours that have actually had songs. Uh, the rest of them have had scores, of course. What is your... Uh, musical sensibility like I, because there's slightly different zones both of them the most the most tough person to work with what? he is sometimes and sometimes the most easiest one so i've, I've seen both <laughs> there's not a single film that i've ever made that is not a musical a musical right. does not mean that it has to have songs if you watch so no i was going to say yeah. that if you watch elizabeth and turn off the sound and you'll see music in the camera. You know what I mean? It's it's like everything, the world, to me, the universe is, is a form of music. Mathematics is a form of music. And so to me, performing, I when I ask my act, actors to choreograph their moments, I'm making a musical. Because I think, to me, music is the very essence of our being. And so it doesn't have to be a musical. Music is permeates the whole film because if it didn't permeate the whole film, I wouldn't know what to do. Raman, you've done uh, the Lord of the Rings on stage. You've done Bombay Dreams on stage. Now, has this become a bit of like kind of second nature to you? You kind of know what to do, like when it's a live performance, or was there were there other challenges here that that those did not? I mean, one thing you obviously mentioned was the fact that. There, you know, they give you a brief and they, this one, you know, they do all that kind of stuff. So, whereas here, it's more like you had complete freedom in terms of what you and Shekhar could do. But other than that, just the composing itself, I'm asking about. So, the past 12, 13 years, I think. So, you're talking about 22 years back, Pommy Dreams, and then, yeah. then 16 years back, a lot of the rings. I had inhibitions before about English language. I always thought... I don't know enough to you know, articulate what, and I also al always relied on people. But I think uh, watching him work, especially how he creates anything out of nothing, sitting on a table and creating the best 
storyline just you know comes in the morning and he talks something and said like oh that's a great idea all from it's all stored in his mind so that actually inspired me to write stories you know my process of so that actually helped me also wearing the producers and director cap helped me to get empowered in my mind think that I can do this and this is what uh, is needed so part of that even though I shut it off now <laughs> I like okay mr. director or mr. producer go away and uh, this is fun and so use whenever I, I need that mind space I use that and um, and past I think four or five years I've been doing some songs in English uh, with Kyuki and uh, you know with my son and ease of that in you know selecting what lyrics would work the core of that that has changed past eight years I think there's there's much more confidence saying this is gonna work and mostly it works <laughs> yeah. 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 he's not yeah, talking of... sorry go ahead sorry. no I was gonna say that he he doesn't know it yet but I've suddenly realized what our next project is going to be so if you ask me I'll tell him that he'll just say when did this happen that's how it goes <laughs> It's it's a project. You're not going to tell us. Sorry. Uh, it's called flow. So it's okay. about life because whatever stops flowing ceases to be. Culture stops flowing, it ceases to be. Universe stops flowing, it ceases to be. Water stops flowing, everything ceases to be. So we are doing the next project is called flow, the musical. You want to announce it here on this? You just did. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good idea, right? Wow. Uh, Shrekhar, why is being presented in the the largest uh, dome-like structure with 365 degree visuals and things like that? So uh, I'm sure there were logistical calculations and, and questions that needed to be addressed. What were the challenges in terms of the creativity that uh, process, creative process that that such a venue uh, presented? Because when you're talking musicals, most of them are just uh, uh, like a proscenium in front of you and what was what was the challenge the creative challenge in creating this so the people that are helping us produce this musical are people that do big events they they've done olympics winter olympics big closing ceremonies and they are our partners in this and they have been working with this to work out the challenges because they know and they understand the technology of what to do so they've been helping us a lot. Of course, the challenge is that uh, because it's 360 degrees, so you don't want people to be turning around to see anything all the time. So there's a lot that you have to be very careful of because the stage is not just directly in front of you. It's 360 degrees around you. But then it also is a much more immersive than anything you can do on stage. You know, it's very immersive, but technologically you have to handle it really carefully. And so we're very lucky to have artists in motion as our partners who are actually doing a lot than in Al Vasal Dome, other than our musical, but are one of the biggest uh, people that do huge Olympic opening ceremonies, closing ceremonies, all, all that. They're the biggest company. So we, we learn a lot from them. Would you say it's a bit like, a, because I, you know, the first time I saw a virtual reality movie, I was a little taken aback because it, I had the, you know, the control of where to go with the movie. Uh, is it a bit like VR? No, in VR you can get close up. You can, you can, you can see all that stuff. Here it's, yeah, yeah. it's a 180 degree. I would say 180 degree, right? 180 degree, 360. 360? Okay. And <laughs> yeah, and the sound is great. Yeah, the sound is 27.2, so the sound can travel on the dome. So we're trying to use all these things. I'm, yeah, we, we don't want to say much, we'll keep quiet, <laughs> right? But if the challenge wasn't there, we would, we would not yeah. have done it. When we walked into that, it was almost unsaid. The moment he looked at it and I looked at it, I knew what he was thinking. He knew what I was thinking. So this is a huge challenge. So then the words came, shall we? I said, <laughs> yes, why not? Nobody yeah, had it before. Was that the was venue that sometimes good. inspires yeah. To push ourselves to find new ideas, new you know soundscape and visuals, you know, and uh, this is one like that. There's no nowhere in the world which which got a dome like this. Yeah. So what can we do here? So, 
And, yeah. and we knew that nobody else in the world would have taken up this challenge. That's why we did it, because nobody in the world would have done it. Shekhar, you put out a very interesting tweet after the premiere of Matterhorn. You said that my first attempt as director on musicals, I love the experience and really look forward to doing more. Doing something live is far more thrilling than film, more immersive. Is that where your creative instincts are taking you now? Is that why we see you kind of... You use the word why. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was no. deliberate. I'm yeah. going to claim. <laughs> okay. I, listen, there's something about theater that you cannot reclaim it. What goes out has, is gone. It's not like film where you can retake it or cut it and re rejig it. On theater, you go out and you've done it. And so the thrill lies in the adventure of it. You know, it's like bungee jumping. You jump off the cliff, there's no retake. <laughs> you've jumped off the cliff. And that's what's so thrilling about theater, live theater. I, I find that. And, um, also, uh, Madhon was in musical, uh, a musical in German, and I don't speak German. I, I don't understand German, but I did it uh, because music has such a common language that I completely understood what they were singing. And uh, yeah, and I, and I remember because I'm a film director, everybody was so concerned. And on the first night, the first show, they said, oh, you have to say something to the cast. And I saw fear on everybody's face on the producer, on, on, on the everybody. There was fear on everybody's face. So I looked at them, I said, guys, there's only one thing I want you to do. Go out and fail. Do your best. Do as, try as hard as you can to fail. And they went out and at the end of the show, the applause wouldn't stop. You can't say it to an actor. You can only say to a group, an entity, the idea of a collective, the challenge of a collective failure. You know, so I said, oh, come on, let's go fail. You know, it was, that's what's exciting about it. That's so exciting about doing something live. But is that why a lot of your films, uh, you kind of maybe, uh, you know, you, you, get, you get interested in an idea and then, you know, maybe you kind of, after some time, you, you, it's no longer a part of your system. Is that because it's not thrilling enough for you anymore? Oh, yes, we do it all the time. You know, you've already made the film. You've already told the story in your head, right? So when you, when you get out to do it, you say, uh, okay, I've done it already. You know what I mean? There is that aspect of being creative or storytellers. You've told the story a hundred times to somebody and somebody, and then you're told, you keep telling yourself, hold it back, don't talk about it, don't talk about it, but then it escapes. It escapes in, into that. Yes, you're absolutely right. Um, yeah, you, you, you do that a lot. I do that a lot. I have probably a hundred stories I've told people and told myself, and they never get made into film, but it doesn't matter. Because one story provokes another, that provokes another, that provokes another, you know. So all your own stories combine into something that culminates in a, in a, in a story. It's, it's, it, they never go away. It's like saying, oh, I dreamt that dream. Now that dream is finished. I'm going to dream this dream that, you know, your dreams continue and continue and continue to evolve. But you're also... You know, when, when you're doing film, you're also kind of involving other people in that project. Uh, so when, is that really a dream that, that results in another dream? Like for example, when you announced Pani, uh, there were logistical considerations that, that, because it was a very expensive film, that you, I think that's what you said, that, that, it, that it couldn't be made at that point. Uh, was that, are there certain movies that say, well, this has to be made as a movie. I mean, I, I really want to make this as a movie. Do, do those dreams exist as well? Obviously. Uh, that way for a director, movie making is like climbing a mountain. You know, when you're climbing a mountain, you're roped to other people. If you tug too hard, they'll fall. Or they don't want to come up with you, they'll make you fall. <laughs> so select your team very carefully. And it's not their fault. Not everybody wants to climb Mount Everest. <laughs> You know, for somebody who has ambitions, yeah, I want to make a really good film with Sheka, but like, hey, I can go to Pali Hill and do it, you know what I mean? Or I can climb a small wall. Why do I need to go all the way to Everest? But Sheka wants to make that film because he wants to go to Mount Everest. So often, you know, that's where the conflict comes. The ambitions are different. Nobody's fault. Everybody's doing it for some reason. And only the director or somebody that is, or maybe, you know, the composer or people or the actor, they might have that ambition to, you know, break bounds. 
to break bounds, to constantly break bounds. Um, the producer say, well, I'm fine where I am. I'll, I'll take you to a point, but not beyond that. I'm not going to break bounds. So that's where the conflicts come. Rama, you also have that, that experience, right, where you pretty much, you're in that film zone, and then you go out and do live shows, you will go out and do something else, like, like uh, Bombay Dreams or now this one. Does this re-energize your creative process in some way? Do you find yourself thinking a little differently after... Uh, you know, going through an experience like this? Yeah, absolutely. I think if you get bored with your work, you're, you're done for life. And if I accept movies like that, which makes me feel bored or doesn't have much to contribute, a person is done because that's, that's it. And then you, you start repeating, you know, what was done before. I want a song like that. It's a trick thing because people always want what you've done before. But when you do that, they see it's doing the same thing. It's not progressed. So it is, we, I'm my own critic, I'm my own uh, evolutionary, I have to look at myself, my growth, uh, what is interesting. If, I, if it excites me, it excites people. Like you're talking about Tumhe Mohammed, and um, I saw the Nazim and I said, let's see where it takes us. So each line took me to a raga, and the raga actually fulfilled what I have to do. Yeah. And uh, I didn't, I've never seen a reaction like that for a song, just with the guitar strings and voice. I think for the past maybe 20 years. Yeah. Like people like, I think the combination of the words and the tune and, and what it says, it has amazing lyrics on it. I think. Right. And also, I think it's a dying art, you know like Nazim and Ghazal and all this stuff. So it's bringing back something which is beautiful, which has been explored so beautifully and bringing back to modern times is a cool thing. And I love the way he shot it, you know. I felt like a Guru Dutt movie there when she was coming in slow motion and he was just standing there with the, with the song. So it's yeah. a great moment of cinema for me. And I guess like that also depends on, you know, like, 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 like Shekhar said, having this team of climbers with you that want to do it, you know, it's like, Anandra wants that kind of song. Irshad Kamil is writing that kind of song. When he came in, uh, he said, I want to do a musical, I want to do a love story. <laughs> so I was like, okay. <laughs> and and then, you know that, they are crazy people, like, like even Himanshu, coming with a line like that, you're like terrified what's going to happen. <laughs> but but the way they've done it, the screenplay, I think is really cool. Now, Shekhar, you started out as, as an actor and uh, I think Every, you know, there's a certain generation for which, you know, they always remember you singing Mana Hotum in Dute Kherone. I finished his career as an actor. That's what he says. <laughs> he did. Because <laughs> Shankar asked me if I would play the villain in his film and he said, no, Shekhar will never give you time. Is and, that right? Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, oh, here comes, you know, a gift of God. Because you become a villain in film, you do 20 films in one year, you go and do the same thing and you get picked for it. What could be better? Yeah, right. So, I was just going to ask, do you miss uh, acting at all? Because I think the last time we saw you was in the Vishwarupam films, uh, like the couple of them. I mean, is that something that that is a part of you still? Is it, uh, or you just do it when like a friend or somebody asks you? You know, I don't have the right to tell actors and dominate them or schedule them on screen, like Nasir or Shabana or Kate Blanchett or Heath Ledger. If I cannot perform to their levels, right, right, no, or don't try, you know, because I never want an actor to look at one of my films and say, "Hang on, you're telling me to act. Look at yourself." <laughs> That's it. I yeah, I love acting. I mean, I love it. I I love working. I mean, Money Call I work with because I wanted to explore his mind. To me, sometimes when I do actors, it, acting, I just sort of. Want to understand with Govindarani, Money Call, and all these guys, what are these guys thinking? Because then I'm learning from that, you know. Right. But there is an addiction to acting. You can't you can't give up this idea of the ability to go to the sets and become something else. That's the addiction, that you are not yourself. If you can do that, and then of course it is somebody else's responsibility <laughs> to make sure it's fine. It's not that I'm no longer the director. But yeah, I'd love to act, despite the fact that he ruined my career as an actor. I saved him. Yeah, I saved him. I saved him. But, but Raman, you, 
mean, you're so much in front of an audience, you're, you're comfortable in front of a live audience and all that kind of stuff. Have you ever considered acting, uh, you know, a one-off thing or something like that? No, I do, you know, commercials and all that stuff. It's just that it requires, you know, sacrifice of my musical time, which I feel ah. is, is not uh, fair. <laughs> Okay. And um, I think the better looking people, better actors out there, why go and become something else, <laughs> do what you're doing. But it fascinates me, the, the art of, you know, actors and, you know, because I did the uh, Lemask thing and I worked with actors who are very finicky. <laughs> so suddenly they'll throw something at me and I'm like, oh, I do now convince that this is going to work. So all that happens. And I asked everybody, do people do that too? Yes, always. They come just one day before shooting and throw a, throw a tantrum. If you can't explain, you'll be cornered. So you have to defend yourself, defend your character, all that stuff. That's why. Act, acting is in everybody's blood. Mm -hmm. If anybody says they don't like acting, as they go back to your childhood. Music is also acting, right? Yeah. I'm acting as a, a lover. I'm acting as a dancer. When I'm, when I'm composing, right? Yeah. I have to imagine myself as... Yeah, yeah you, you're putting yourself out there in multiple selves, yeah. So that's that's uh, that's Rahman the actor. <laughs> have you been to a Rahman concert? I've way, been to one. Yeah, the way he controls those screaming audiences, <laughs> there's a subtle actor who knows how to do it. It's not just his music, it's his presence also. This uh, why uh, premieres in like like exactly... You don't know the exact date. The next 10 days. The next 10 days. The day will be okay. like really soon. Okay, the day will be announced soon. Okay, so thank you so much for talking to us and um, all the best for why. You know, like you said, everything else, everything is a question and I think why is a good question to ask uh, in, a, in an artistic format, in a creative format. So thank you so much for speaking to us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.